Welcome to another Onefinity CNC support video. In this video, we'll be going over the power switch on the controller. From time to time, users that keep their controller close to their machine may see a buildup of dust in their power switch, causing it to fail. Other users may just have a faulty power switch and need to switch it out when we send a replacement. In this video, we're going to show how to do both. We're starting with a controller we believe has a dirty or defective power switch. We'll try to flip it on and we'll use the fan as an indicator of whether or not the controller is turning on. Remember to always unplug your controller before working on it to prevent any injury to you or damage to the board. Now that we've just unplugged our controller, we're going to plug it back in and we're going to check the two LED indicators on the Raspberry Pi to make sure that it is functioning correctly. We can see that it is not lit up, so we know that we are not getting power. Now that we know our Pi isn't getting power, we're going to test the switch in question. We're going to do that by keeping an eye on the LED indicators, and we are going to complete the circuit on the back of the switch. This will not electrocute you. You can see that the LED indicators are now turning on, so we know that we have a dirty or defective switch. Now we'll unplug our power switch from the board. The wires are both red, not to be confused with the black and red wires of the fan. With the switch unplugged and the faceplate removed, we will pinch the top and bottom and push the switch out through the front. With the switch removed from the faceplate, we'll use a small flathead screwdriver to pry the switch apart. With the switch itself removed, we can see the contents of the housing. When I empty the contents of the switch out, you can see a lot of sawdust in the toggle switch that completes the circuit. While we have it disassembled, we're going to blow everything off with compressed air, and then we will place the switch back together. Here we want to make sure that we do not lose the spring on the back side of the rocker switch. Once we've cleaned out the switch and its housing, we can reassemble it. To do this, we're using a pair of tweezers to hold the toggle switch, and we can place it down in there and line it up correctly this way. Once the contact is back in place, we can put the switch back into its housing. Remember to make sure that the spring is present. Here with the terminals at the top, we are going to place the zero on the terminal side of the switch and the one on the non-terminal side. With the power switch now cleaned out and reassembled, we can attach it back to our controller for testing. We connect our power switch right next to the main power source going to the board. And once that is secured, we can flip our switch on and keep an eye on those LED indicators and we can see that our power switch is now functioning as it should. Now that our switch has been cleaned out and reassembled, we can place it back in the front face plate of the controller. You want to keep the graded area towards the top of the controller with the switch going on the left side. You also want to make sure that the 1 is at the top and the 0 is at the bottom. Once we've confirmed that our switch is positioned correctly, we can take our thumbs and push it through the faceplate. It will click into place. With our power switch now seated in the faceplate, we can remount the faceplate to the controller box. With the faceplate secured, we can now run our wire back to the controller board and attach it next to the power source. With our controller reassembled, we will disengage our e-stop, plug in our power cable, and flip on our power switch. We'll take a look at our fan to make sure that it's running as it should. And with our fan running, we can see that our controller is powered up and working correctly.